Hello guys, Winston here. My friend who I went to Maker Fair with is an awesome pyrography artist, and she gave me a woodburn pendant that she'd made for the trip. She's a bit of an adventure nut, and she finds inspiration from different locales, so this one was San Francisco themed. Its hand-drawn imagery of the Golden Gate Bridge with the Marin headlands as a backdrop was a beautiful and ironic foil to everything I stand for. As an engineer, I often find myself thinking quite rigidly about design. I hate sketching lines I can't put dimensions on, especially on a computer where I want everything to have a clear, quantifiable definition. It's a limitation of my creativity that's always bugged me to some extent. I don't design with organic shapes, I don't know how to be emotionally expressive with my work, and I rarely create something without a reference. Plus, I lean on my CNC as a crutch because the imperfections that result from my poor use of paintbrushes, or saws, or other handheld implements bothers me to no end. So, finding myself quite attached to this piece, I wanted to make it a permanent home on my desk to remind myself to think more creatively and leave my comfort zone more often. Since I was sitting on a small stockpile of nice offcuts, I figured I could make a simple and efficient stand out of two interlocking pieces of wood. But before I committed to a design, I first put together a cardboard proof of concept. I wanted to make sure that the pendant would rest securely on two little protrusions that would be offset 90 degrees. I knew this design would work for flat pieces like cards or thin boards, but I wasn't sure how it would catch on the rounded profile of the pendant. So with an initial design in mind, I created a pair of cardboard cutouts. The cardboard prototype gave me a warm and fuzzy that this design would work, so I then created a CAD model and cut out a second prototype from 5mm plywood. This stand worked reasonably well holding my pendant, but I noticed some stability issues. Both the stand itself and the pendant had tendencies to tip when being handled. So the next and final iteration would have a slightly wider footprint. I also knew, based on my plywood tests, that the dimension of my interlocking cuts could be defined as the exact thickness of my wooden boards. The minimal amount of backlash and run out of my machine wouldn't affect the final fit of these pieces. In my fusion model, I first created one part of the stand, and then created a second body that was derived from the first. To ensure the cleanest possible edges, I used no work holding tabs, opting instead to do a complete cut through with a 1 16th inch end mill. Double sided tape would hold the pieces in place during cutting. With my design and tool path finalized, I moved to my shape oko. I taped down my stock material, zeroed as close to the corner as I dared, and cut out the first of two pieces. To save space with the second piece, I rotated my coordinate system so I could arrange the two cuts as close together as possible. After popping off my cut pieces, I gave them a really light sanding and put them together. The fit was snug and secure. That was liable to change after finishing, but with just a light coat of mineral oil, I didn't expect the outer dimensions to move on me all that much. Plus, I could always come back and sand the interlocking channels slightly since they wouldn't be visible from the outside. And with that, my simple little stand was complete. It now currently resides on my desk supporting the woodburn pendant just below my line of sight where I'd normally be doing CAD work. If I didn't have to break up the project into two days because of my day job, I could have finished this stand in a couple hours, including the time spent prototyping, doing CAD, cutting, and finishing. And that's what I love about digital fabrication. It makes iterating on designs ridiculously easy. But there's still something to be said for just picking up a pair of scissors or some hand tools and making a quick and dirty prototype. That wraps up this week's project video. If you want to see more of my friend's work, I'll put a link to her Etsy store in the comments section down below. Otherwise, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back with another CNC-related video in a week or two.